Ian Crawshaw, only from the local congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. We had a message on our answering machine from you. All right, so, I uh, just yes. Is it a convenient time to talk right now? Um, yes, um, I I had trouble getting through to Jehovah's Witnesses. I I phoned a few congregations. And I couldn't couldn't speak to anyone, so I left some messages. Which which congregation are you? We're in the Morley Tingley congregation. Sorry, Morley. Uh, sorry, in in Morley. Well, there's this there's two or three congregations that share the hall. So Morley Gildas and Morley Tingley. Tingley. There's even a Morley. That's the one. Tingley Congregation. T I N G N G L E Y. Oh right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, I'm. Um, I've been reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever, which I found mm. very interesting. Okay. Um, I was hoping to look at an individual chapter of the book. I mean, chapter seven right. is rather interesting. Yeah. On the Holy Spirit, but. Mm. People have told me, as I've been speaking to various people that I'm reading the book, people have said, don't have anything to do with it, they're a cult. And I thought, <laughs> well, is that true or not? I mean, I mean perhaps you yeah. can help. Uh, well, I would certainly say, obviously, we're, we're definitely far from being a cult. Uh, all, our, all, our, all our meetings are open to the public. Anybody can walk into a kingdom hall and see exactly what we've been taught and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we are... We are. <laughs> Far from being a cult. I know it's been said before that, uh, no, all we do is just follow the teachings in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Trouble is, that's what everybody else says as well. Uh, Mormons, yeah. Seventh-day Adventists, I uh, used yeah, to be in an extreme Pentecostal group, yeah. which, which I would say was a cult. Uh, and yeah. their meetings are open to the public, and they say they're not a cult, and they say they just follow the teachings of the Bible. Yeah. I suppose is when, when well, we, with, with that book that you've got, is that is exactly what we believe, exactly what we practice, and exactly how we are. Uh, where, where, where else do you live, Robert? Um, well, I'm I'm in the southwest. Southwest. Yeah. So south. I'm southwest of you. Right. Okay. Well, when you say southwest of me, where, where is is that in Yorkshire or are you further southwest than no, that? No, I'm, I'm further southwest than that, but I'm not really very interested about locations and where I live. Um, no, I was, I was just thinking if you wanted somebody to call by and speak to you. No, no, I'm, 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 no I, I, I'm my, my time is very limited. Um, yeah. I'm looking at your book. I prefer yeah. at the moment just to speak on the phone or on Zoom. Yeah, okay. Rather than have people come to my house. Um, yeah. My privacy is quite important to me. Um, That's fine. You say Jehovah's Witnesses are not a cult. How would you define a cult? Mm. Uh, I suppose when you look at what well, a cult is, right? we isolate people off. And it's like I say, we, we just like keep them away from family and we isolate them and we was like exploit them. That, that's, that's how I think of a cult when you, when you look at the uh, way that some, some behave that way. Uh, but that's far from what we are and far from what we do. It's far from what you are, except for what you do? Yep. No, I say far from what we are and far from what we do. We, we, oh. we, we certainly nothing like that. We we do put a lot of emphasis on family. and, and, and you know, So, no, we, we, we don't try to isolate people off from... I saw a video on JW Broadcasting where a woman had a, oh, okay. a text message from her son and the yeah. son was not allowed, they wouldn't have any contact with the son so she deleted, she didn't read the message, she deleted it and they wouldn't talk to their oh, own like, son. Yeah. That was on JW Broadcasting, I think it was yeah. called disfellowshipping. The, well, yeah, that's, that's slightly different. So yeah, there is, there is a disfellowshipping arrangement. The, new, the disfellowshipping arrangement uh, there's, there's lots to do with it and explained on uh, our website, jdb.org. And if you, if you were to type in the search box, this fellowship in arrangement, uh, and it tells you the background to it, what it, what it involves, but more importantly, why and how it can actually be a loving arrangement. Because what we wanted to do, obviously, is, is 
we want is we, we, we obviously want them back with us, knowing what the future holds and knowing that we want them back with us forever. Uh, and so we, we want them to restore their relationship with Jehovah uh, and join us back in, in the prospect of everlasting life in the future. Would that be you want them back on your terms or on their terms? Back on God's terms, on what the Bible says. And who teaches God's terms? It's all from the Bible. Right, but who is it's the all one based who's... on the scriptures? Right. So we, when we, we, we don't sort out what that verse says, this that's all it means. We, we, we look at what the Bible teaches as a whole. So we find that the Bible, in many cases, uh, explains itself. Um, so it's not a case of us having now our own interpretation, we let the Bible interpret itself. What I say is, if you, if you have a look at that, that whole arrangement, um, it'll, it'll hopefully clarify in your own mind, because trying to talk you through and tell you stuff on the phone, and you think, well, okay, how about that? Sorry, so sorry what, are you, what are you saying to me? If, if, you, if you were to go like that as JW Walk, so obviously you, you, you I don't know if you've done... I, well, I, 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 you. Look, look, I, I'm happy to talk to people and then I can determine whether people know what they're talking about. What I'm not doing yeah. is going to spend the rest of my life going to websites and reading literature for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Whenever I've yeah. spoken to people, religious people, they always tell me that I should spend years of my life reading their literature. Mormons tell you to spend <laughs> to read reams of yeah. Mormon literature. Seventh-day Adventists yeah. have pamphlets and yeah. pamphlets and more pamphlets. And yeah. then books, they go on to books, and you have reading that would take you 10 years to go through. So everyone wants you to spend your life reading their literature. I think it's yeah. valuable to talk to people and find out whether people even know what they're talking about. My background oh, yeah, is in why, the... That's why we do the Doctrine Hall, look. My background, is in the, my background is in the Pentecostal movement. I used to be involved yeah. with, firstly, mm -hmm. Assemblies of God. In 1985, mm -hmm. I was baptised in the Assemblies of God Church. And then in 1988, yeah. I was rebaptized in the Oneness Movement, which is a very extreme form of anti-Trinitarian Pentecostalism. They're modalists. Right. They're Pentecostals who deny the Trinity. They're known as Oneness, right. Jesus Only, the Apostolic Movement, and they oh. number probably over 50 million. They're far, far larger than Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses, Mormons, and Seventh-day Adventists put together. But yeah. today, yeah. they just call themselves Pentecostal. Right. All right. Um, they sort of have toned down the sort of. Um, um, I mean, they still believe that most of them still believe everyone else is going to go to hell and burn in hell for all eternity if you don't join their group. Yeah, but yeah. they've toned that down now. Over the last 30 years, it's been toned down a lot. And they find yeah, that now, um, because of um, the lack of biblical knowledge that so many church people have, they can just be accepted by other groups. Yeah, strange, isn't it? And so, you, when you look at the various teachings and, and the whole of the religions and say, oh, we follow the Bible, we follow the Bible, well, hang on, the Bible says that. How can, how can that be the case? Um, as I say, so that, I... That's, that's, I, I was involved for just under a year with the oneness in the 1980s. Now, I would see them yeah. as a cult. And the yeah. reason I'd see them as a cult is that they do four things. They add, they subtract, they multiply and they divide. You think of those four mathematical symbols. Yeah. Right? They add. They add to the Bible. It's not enough. Even, mm -hmm. though, even though we read that the man of God is thoroughly equipped with the Bible. Yeah, exactly. Same thing as before, yeah. Fully accomplished, fully. Yeah, exactly. So we don't need more than what we've got the Bible. So we've got the Bible. Uh, and that's obviously what we teach and we stick to. Um, we obviously have a literature that explains the Bible, but again, all it does is it's pulling other verses from the Bible to help us get a clearer picture of understanding it. And our, our, our book, which obviously you, you're reading, and I'm, I'm hoping you enjoy reading it, uh, is, is just one of our tools to help people come to understand the Bible. So it's not a case of this book's helping you to understand what Jehovah's Witnesses believe, which technically it does, but it helps you understand understand the Bible and the Bible's message and the Bible's hope for the future, if that makes sense.
Um, if I could get back to what I was saying, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, talks about yep. the Bible making us thoroughly equipped for salvation. Yep. So we don't need anything yep. other than the Bible. It says, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able yep. to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so the oneness adds to the Bible. They, they, they say the Bible's the word of God, but in reality, what they're really following is the sort of prophetic words of their pastors and their prophets and their apostles who believe that God is speaking through them directly today. So they add to the Bible. It's a general yeah. tendency. American groups, on the whole, American groups will add to the Bible. Mm -hmm. European groups, which are liberal, take away from the Bible. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. So if and you think so, of the Mormons... So when, when, when you analyse, obviously, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we do neither. We... We use the Bible. Like I say, we have, such as your book that you've been reading, which helps us to understand the Bible, but it's all focused purely on, on God's Word. Yes, everyone else says they're, what they're saying is focused mm. on God's Word too. Um, the, yeah. the, uh, I'm losing the thread of my thought. I'm, I'm sorry. So if you think of the Mormons, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Pentecostals, mm. They, they're yep. American-based groups, and they yep. add to the Bible. Whereas yep. in Europe, we have a lot of liberalism, and people don't really believe yep. the Bible at all. They take away from it. They don't take it That's seriously. Um, yep. I'd actually say that what's doing far more damage to the Christian church today is the American side of things. It's adding to the yep. Bible is far more dangerous than taking away from it. Um, so the one that's added to the Bible, pr prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, uh, prophetic revelations. The the second thing they do, that's the plus, is minus. Now they yeah. take away from the person and the work of Christ. I would believe that Christ is God, but to the right, minus. But this is this is again then where well you've got a lot of Christian religions that believe that Jesus is God. Many that don't, including Jehovah's Witnesses. But again, we focus on what the Bible actually says to answer that question. And so in, in that book that you're reading, you go to the chapter on who is Jesus. That's chapter 15. It, it, I've read yeah, it. Yeah, it goes into that, that side of things. I, I don't uh, think it offers again, any clear proof at all. Um, but we right. would need to look at that carefully mm. and slowly. But the second mm. thing that cults do is they take away from the person of Christ or the work of Christ. It's easy to say, it's easy to find that out in, say, Mormonism because they believe that Jesus was created. He was a man, he lived a life, and then he was elevated, he became a god, just like Joseph Smith has become a god. So they diminish right. Christ. They, yep. If you think of the mathematical symbol minus, they take away from Christ. And other groups take away from the work of Christ. So the oneness movement that I used to be a part of, although they would say um, that, you know, we're saved by Jesus and his death on the tree and his resurrection. Well, they don't really believe that because they focus all the time on what you do, your baptism. You must be baptized. You must speak in tongues. You must pay your tithe. You must live a holy life. You must go to all the meetings. You mustn't miss a single meeting. Um, and they take, they, they take away from the work of Christ because although they pay lip service to Jesus' death, burial and resurrection, really Jesus only made the first down payment of salvation he did that on the cross or the tree but but really salvation they take away from the work of christ because christ didn't completely save us we've got to do our part and that leads well, on of course to it's just faith in the ransom provision and that leads and on we to fully the agree with that yeah. our and faith in that the reason that ransom sacrifice of christ jesus that's what gains is the approved standing and reconciliation with god Unfortunately, I'm going to have to dash, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, listen to a, a meeting myself. I can. Uh, but it's been nice talking to you. I can speak some of the time. I'm interested in Chapter 7. If you want to discuss Chapter 7, right. you've got my number. My name's okay, Robert. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks, Paul. So, what I might do is, if I listen to okay, I'll pass your number on. Yes. And I'll, I'll wait for somebody else to give you a quick call if that's okay. On Chapter 7. That'd be lovely. Thank you. Chapter 7. Yep, look forward to it. Thank you. Thank Take you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. 
Well, just to continue, um, we've done the plus. Cults add to the Bible. You've got the Book of Mormon. You've got the um, extreme Pentecostals who, who would claim that they have prophets and apostles today who are giving prophetic revelation. Um, I certainly don't doubt that God can guide us today. I do believe that that happens. And I believe God has spoken to me twice in my life verbally and once in written form to guide me um, but there's no revelation of christ today outside of the bible if you want to know about jesus you go to the bible you don't go to brother billy bob or the pope or some apostle or prophet or some member of the governing body of jehovah's witness or to some mormon prophet the only revelation of jesus is through the bible yes i do believe that god can guide us today I don't believe that we pray to God and he never answers us in prayer and as I say uh, three times in my life God has guided me um, but beware of people who add to the Bible and this seems to be the real danger in American fundamentalism evangelicalism and so many of the American cults the Jehovah's Witnesses the Mormons the Seventh-day Adventists and the extreme Pentecostals. They just add to the Bible, it's just not sufficient. The revelation of Christ is, according to the Mormons, through the Bible, plus through their prophets and apostles and leaders and their, their books and their writings. Just as for the Seventh-day Adventists, the revelation of Christ is not through the Bible alone, it's through the Bible plus the writings of Ellen G. White and, and other um, Seventh-day Adventist literature. Secondly, they, they take away, they take away from the person of Christ or from the work of Christ. Thirdly, they multiply human works. Most of these cults teach the same thing. Jesus paid, made the first down payment. It's like buying something on higher, higher purchase. If you're poor, you can't pay for uh, your car or your washing machine or your television. So you buy it on higher purchase. And who makes the first payment? according to these religious cults it's Jesus but then after that you've got to do your own good works repeatedly do these good works and so you're making the future payments after Jesus's first down payment um, so uh, cults multiply human good works and human effort now I'm not against good works but not for salvation and that's where the cults go wrong I believe in good works I believe that Christians should do good works, but after salvation, in gratitude for what Christ has done. What the cults do is they say that your good works contribute to your salvation, and that's blasphemy. And the final thing is divide. When Jesus died, we read that the, the curtain in the temple that kept the Holy of Holies separated from the... Um, most from the holy place in the temple we find that that curtain was ripped from top to bottom and it wasn't a thin curtain like like you'd have on your windows i think in america you call them drapes but we call them curtains here in 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 um, britain that that curtain was about four inches to six inches thick and it was ripped from top to bottom because it was ripped by God himself to show that the way into the very presence of God now is through Jesus Christ. And there's, no, there's nothing that keeps you away from a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. Now, what the cults do is they rebuild that curtain. They say, you can't go to God. You can't go to God through Jesus. You've got to come through us. And so what they do is they rebuild that curtain and they say that curtain is our religious um, system. And unless you come to our religious system, God won't have anything to do with you. And by, boy, oh boy, have I heard that, not only from the cults, but from my background in um, Baptist churches, and charismatic, the sort of less extreme, more moderate charismatic and Pentecostal churches, I have heard that repeatedly. You can't miss a meeting. You can't miss a meeting. 
because they they honestly believe that their religious leaders their pastors literally take the place of of Christ and the only way to Christ is through their religious system so I, I think this is very helpful I, I got this um, uh, analogy of plus minus multiply and divide from the life after religion YouTube channel by Dan and Angela they made some fabulous comments on this and I hope that this has been helpful and all credit to them for sharing this wonderful information on cults tend to do four things plus they add to the Bible minus they take away from the work person and work of Christ they multiply human efforts and there's nothing wrong with human efforts but they twist that to say human efforts in order to earn salvation Christ doesn't earn salvation 100% you've got to make your contribution so you've got to multiply lots and lots and lots of human efforts usually involves paying money by the way and lastly divide they rebuild that curtain which got, which God himself ripped in the temple when Christ died and they say no 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 the way into the holy of holies the way to christ the way to, to to god through christ is you've got to first go to us and to our religious organization in other words they rebuild the temple and they divide they keep you from the from the relationship with god because they say you that you've got to have a relationship with them and only when you've got a relationship with the church or with the religious cult or the religious system only then can you go to God. At least that's what they claim. Anyway, thank you.